And then the people go, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. They ain't coming. They ain't coming. <laughs> they ain't coming. It's too hard. So I remember when the church was all around all that. But now, here it is on a nice street and a nice neighborhood and has a sign. Do not despise small beginnings. And that sign, that's all right, baby. Hang in there. We all was in that, we all was at that level. Just go get a baby some, uh, not a lollipop, because it might be bouncing all around the walls and everything. You just give it, a, you know, maybe some crackers or something. It'll be all right. Amen. Communion or something, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Grape juice, crackers, he'll be all right. Praise the Lord. Let him bless the guy while he's in church. Praise the Lord. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Okay. Everybody say unity. Yeah. Okay, praise God. So here's what I want to do. I want to encourage you that there's leaders in you. I mean, I mean, there's leadership on the inside of you. And I want you to hear something because I do really believe that there's an important job that needs to be done. I believe there's an important job, the vision of 2013. There's an important job, important job that needs to be done, and you're a part of it. So I want to share with you, and I want you to ask yourself as I share this story. I want you to put yourself or identify yourself with one of these four individuals I'm going to share with you. I believe that every single person in here qualifies or fits in the category of one of these individuals. So I want you to listen, because this is about the vision of the body here. An important job that needs to be done. Where are you going to fit? This is a story about four people. Everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. There's an important job that needs to be done. Everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. So somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought that anybody could have done it, but nobody realized that everybody would not do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. Was there anybody here today that fits in that category? I want you to understand that together, teams, together, each achieves more success. That we need to work together and we need to see the vision and understand that this is something that God has called me to be a part of. Many of you are saying, well, you know, I just came here two years ago. But I want you to know that this vision actually started, this vision actually started in 1962. August of 19, August the 2nd, 1962, there was a young man that was born in New Jersey by the name of Keith Bradley. And just like Jeremiah, God said, I knew you before you was in your mother's womb. And I got plans for you. And through all the things that he went through to get to this place, could it be that he's here for such a time as this? Could it be that you're here for such a time as this? Now, the word time, just give me a moment to share with you about the word time because it's broken down in several categories and definitions and so the Greek comes with assistance here because the word time you can um, there's a word called chronos and chronos is dealing with chronological time time in order as in one two 
three, four, five, six. In other words, you know where the next thing is coming. You know one, come two, come three, come four. But this time that I'm talking about, about are you here for such a time as this, is dealing with a word they call kairos. Kairos means a season. It's a season. And sometimes one of the reasons why we end up aborting the mission of God in our lives is because we're putting God on chronos time. We're putting God on, okay, God, if this happens, then this should happen next. And then this should happen next. See, but when you look at it that way, that's not faith. You just want to be in control of every situation that's going on in your life. That's not faith. That's not trusting God. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But chronos is a season. There's seasons in our lives. There's, there's some dry places in our lives. There's some tough times in our lives. There's some disappointments in our lives. There's some discouragement in our lives. There's some dream takers in our lives. But it doesn't last, as the old folks said, trouble don't last always. But at some point in time, my winter season, my fall season is going to be over. And spring is coming. And summer is coming. A kairos moment. A time that God has you here for this, this day, this purpose. To help this young man and his wife fulfill the vision here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But um, I want you to remind me about Noah. Okay, so just remember Noah. Okay. So the question is now, how can we, or what we need to do to help this vision come to fruition? How can we cause what God has placed on the inside of him or them to be a blessing, not only to you, but that you, along with them, could be a blessing to Charlotte. Now, I know what you're thinking already. I can look at you and tell. I done gave you a seed, and you're looking at the seed. But you got to see that seed as an apple. Uh-oh, watch this. Your outlook is your what? Outcome. How you see things. Your outlook is your outcome. How do you see things? How do you view things? There's a seed. Someone sees an apple. Someone sees just another seed. Someone gets an apple in their hand and they eat it and they just throw the rest away. Other person say, I'm going to eat the apple and I'm going to plant the seeds. So I can get more what? Apples. There's seeds of greatness on the inside of you. And the Lord is waiting for it to come during this time in this season for such a time as this, a Kairos moment. There's a season. Your season is here. Israel, don't make me sing. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing coming my way. It's a season of what? Power. Come on, speak to me. Say power. power. And prosperity. It's a season coming to me. But let me just share with you for a moment because I want to move on here. Vision. We got to understand what vision is. Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 2 and 3 says to write the vision down and make it plain that he or she that reads it will be able to what? Run with it. But you got to write it down. You got to write down your vision. And I want you to understand that so often people think vision is just about eyesight. But vision is not about eyesight, it's about insight. But people look at it, they say, man, it's not, nah, man, nah, I know what I'm talking about, that's what I see. Vision is not about eyesight. It's about insight. 
I'll say it like this. I'll give you two individuals who has more vision than most people who can see. Stevie Wonder and Helen Keller. Now somebody said, wait a minute now, they blind, they blind. Helen Keller was a motivational speaker. She went, she wrote books, and she overcame the odds. She defined the odds. She was not one who had cantitis. She touched a seed, she touched a seed and she felt an apple. Stevie Wonder, the same thing. Happy birthday. I couldn't resist you. Know. But Stevie, they have more vision than people who can see with the naked eye. Wow. Let me tell you something. It's time for you to wake up that vision on the inside of you and not allow it to lay dormant because God has a work for you to do. Talking about vision. Now, please, just be with me. Everybody say vision. vision. Come on, everybody say vision. vision. See, now, come on, everybody say vision. vision. Okay, well, say everybody, everybody. Okay, there was two people. There was two prisoners. There was two prisoners. They was in the same cell. They was doing the same time. And every day, they would go by the window and look and hold the bars and they would go out the window and one would look and they would see the dirt. They'll see the ground. Then he'll, he walks back and he's depressed. The other prisoner comes and do the same thing. Same time, same place, everything. He looks, he looks up, and he sees the stars, and he sees the sky. And the difference between the two is one vision is only, just get a picture for a moment, five feet. That's the vision, five feet. Because he's looking down. The other one vision is the stars. And the sky is what? His limit. So there is no limit in his mind. So in his mind, he's thinking, when I get out of here, the sky is the limit. The other person is looking at the dirt, and he's only, his, his vision is only five what? Come on, everybody say five feet. Five. Come on, everybody say five feet. Five. So they're five feet, so what that means is that they're five feet, so as he looks down, the only thing he can see is defeat. Like Duffy, defeat, you know. <laughs> That's the only thing he can see is defeat. Defeat. Every day, he looks and he see what? Defeat. Every single day, month after month, he see what? Defeat. Vision is not about your eyesight. It's about your insight. It's about how God sees you. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's not time for us to walk in defeat. Amen? Well, what I'm going to do is this, and I wouldn't mind sharing a little bit more about that. I trust that that gave you just a, just a touch of where you need to go or where we need to go as a church. But I do want to say this, and I believe this is appropriate, Noah. I want to say this about the pastor because he reminds me of this Bible character named Noah. And many of you have read the story. Many of you have heard the story. Many of you know the story very well. So I pray that you just be patient with me as I share with you what I see in Noah and what I see in him and what I see in them as leaders. First of all, Noah name. The name Noah itself means comfort. The name Noah itself means rest. 